Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I've got one of Hornby's greatest tender engines of all time to show to you. Today's loco then I believe came third in my poll for Hornby's greatest model train of all time, so that's not too shabby. The loco then is this, it is the beautiful LNER B12 and what a fantastic machine this one is. Now I did review this three or four years ago now, but I've decided that the time is right that I now revisit it. I think I've got better, well I've got, I know I've got better equipment these days so I can show it off a little bit better for you. I also think I'm a bit more thorough in my reviews these days so you're going to get a better idea of what this is like. And also, I think I've got more experience of various models as well by now, so it's a good time to do it again. One thing that is true of this model is that it was quite a lot cheaper three years ago when I first bought this. I think I paid £120. Now, even if you shop around, the least I can find it for is around 130 something like that. However, look at this thing. It is absolutely gorgeous. And to be honest, if you don't know anything about this, you're in for a treat today because I would say this is worth every penny. So if you're interested in picking one of these up, I will put an affiliate link down in the description. You can check out the range and also check out the lined black version that they do of these. That just looks amazing. I'm really tempted by that, but I'm having to abstain if I can. Either way, before I waffle you all to death, let's get this out and see what this is like. All right, fingers crossed this is going to be a fun time. All right, I mean, just the box alone. If this doesn't make you hungry, I don't know what will, because this thing just looks so incredibly handsome. First up then, let's talk about the RRP. Hornby's RRP for this is £160.99. And while expensive, it does seem to be quite logical, that price. It seems to be in line with their other products. I mean, the Pacifics tend to go for £190 to £200, and it's around £20 more, I think, than the D16, which is a similar loco to this, but it's just a 440. So the pricing here, while expensive, as I say, does seem to be quite logical, unlike other manufacturers that I won't mention, unless I get, oh yes, I, I think I have got a little tickle on the nose. Drackman! <clears throat> ah, it feels better. It's hay fever. It seems to hit me towards the end of the year for some reason. I don't know what I'm doing. Let me show you the end of the box then. So the version I went for is R3430. It is LNER B12 class locomotive and the running number on mine is 8573. And as you can tell from the front of the box, this is in the LNER lined green. And if you think it looks nice on the box, wait until we get it open. It's just incredible, this one. Right, let me show you the back of the box then. So this was classified as a 4P or a 3F, so it's weaker on freight days. In the middle of the box, you have a brief history of the class. And as always, feel free to pause and read that if you'd like to learn more. But I will give you some history in just a second. And then the far end of the box shows you these diagrams, as you can see, which Hornby used to help them design the model, dated 2015. So it's actually a bit more modern than I thought. I can't believe it's only been five years since these were designed let alone released yeah, it's quite interesting anyway let's get this thing out I, if you can't tell I'm quite excited about this one uh, it's been a long time since I've done a close look at this thing and yeah I just got such fond memories of this loco and the fact that I know kind of what's in store as well there's none of the usual trepidation where I'm worried about how a loco is going to turn out right so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go straight in for the kill and pull out the uh, blister pack here. So heavy already and there's a very good reason for the weight. And as you can see, look at this thing. Look how great that looks. I mean, Hornby have had B12s in their range for a long time and yet this was the first completely new tool that they did in around 60 years. When I first saw this, I was completely blown away, very much so. Right, so there's the blister pack. I will just grab some of the paperwork here. So we've got this, it says fitting the guard irons, which is quite interesting. I uh, don't believe we have them fitted to the model as is, but if you want to, uh, this shows you exactly where they go, which is great. I mean, that's really, really good. You wouldn't be left scratching your head over that one, would you? Although I suppose it's more obvious than other details that might be less so. Anyway, so here we have the class B12 operating and maintenance instructions. Let's have a quick look inside. 
All right, so it is the basics. It shows you a little bit about lubrication, more on the accessories. I guess they forgot to mention the guard irons on this, which is why you've got that sort of addendum. Uh, body removal, which is quite important for servicing, close coupling, etc. It doesn't actually show you the mechanism on this uh, page, which is a shame, but I'll show you that later on. And then on the back, yeah, brake rods. So that is fairly standard stuff. There's nothing out of the ordinary there, which means that we can get straight on and open this thing up. So let's pull off the cover, first of all, and have a look at that detail bag. All right, so we kind of know what some of this stuff is. You've got the guard irons, which have been painted red. Also painted are the vacuum fittings, the vacuum pipes. We've got black, red, and green on those, which is quite impressive. Brake rigging, as promised, and also a NEM coupling there, which you can fit onto the front if you like. And on top of that, there's some other minor details as well, which you could fit if you want to, but as you can tell, I don't. Uh, my detail bag is still sealed. All right, are you ready then? I wanted to do a drum roll, but I feel I do too much of that kind of cheesy nonsense these days, so I won't do that. All right, here we go then. Let me, I mean, look at this thing. <laughs> you see that? You see that lining? Yeah, it's something very special, is this. Right, let me try and get this out then. You've got these blobs of foam, which make it difficult. Whoa. I tell you what, I had truly forgotten how bulky and heavy these locos are. All right, as I was hinting at earlier, there is a really good reason for that. And the reason is that this loco is largely die-cast. Yes, it's the magic word. So all of that boiler is made of metal, and it's one of the biggest die-cast boilers out there, that's for sure. The side of the cap is also made of metal too. I think, though, that's more or less it. The running plate isn't, uh, which is unusual, and the smoke box on that area isn't either. However, the weight of the Loco is incredible. Really, really good. And I believe there's a big heavy chassis in this one as well. So, I mean, the quality is evident straight away, isn't it? Really, really well-built models. Uh, very sturdy as well, despite the level of detail, which is also quite apparent. So, we will have a close look at this amazing model in just a second. But first of all, if anybody was interested, here we go on the history of the B12s. So the B-12 actually started life as the Class S-69 of the Great Eastern Railway when they were first introduced to the design of S.D. Holden way back in 1911. Intended for express passenger work, the class helped to replace the older Claude Hamilton locomotives. Uh, those are the 440s I've already mentioned. Uh, at the time, those were apparently struggling with the larger trains. And being 440s, I guess that makes sense. At the time, bigger and better 440s had actually been the initial choice to replace the Claudes. However, the axle load proved to be too great, and so the additional driving wheels were added uh, to the design, I guess. Hence the similar appearance to the D16. That is quite interesting, isn't it? Because they do look very, very similar. Just over 80 of these locos were produced between 1911 and 1928. After grouping, the S69s were inherited by the LNER, and they were reclassified to the B12s as we know them now. And actually 10 of the 80 produced were actually produced by the LNER over the next five years or so. After that, most of the class were used for passenger work into the BR era, although by 1961, the entirety of the class had very sadly been withdrawn. Nearly all of the class were scrapped, although one does survive under preservation. So there you have it then, the phenomenal Hornby B12 with its die-cast boiler up close and personal for you. I don't know whether this is just some kind of crazy psychology going on, but this boiler looks better than plastic ones, in my opinion. I mean, it's just got a sort of metallic sheen. If I show you the rivets on the top, there's just something about that that looks ultra realistic. The way that light bounces off it, I don't know, you can kind of tell that it's metal, in my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. But yeah, this thing is really, really impressive. The weight then, first of all, this weighs in at 353 grams, loco and tender, which is really quite impressive. That is more than the Backman Patriot. It's more than the standard class four from Backman. I mean, these are much newer designs, larger designs. This is more hefty than those. It is a little bit less than the Backman N class though, which was unusually heavy for its size. As you can tell, looking at the loco, just the quality of the finish, the, the decoration, the separately fitted details is really, really impressive. There are one or two slight niggles that I have for this model. It's not perfect by any means, but I think as far as models go, this is probably one of the closest that I've seen to that perfection. 
First of all though, let's take a look at some of the decoration and I've made a bit of a change to my camera setup this time so that we can get in even closer. As you can see, the lining on the boiler is just superb. They've done a really, really good job of that. You can see that there is a very noticeable join where the body meets the chassis. I did just remove the body a few minutes ago to make sure that the chassis wasn't just caught on something. No, it does seem to be that way. I've tightened up all the screws. There's definitely nothing I can do about that. I've looked back even over old footage to see if that was a problem then. Yeah, it seems that it was, although it seems to be worse now than it was back then. So I don't know whether things have warped over time. It's very hot up the loft at the moment. So has expansion been a factor? I don't know, but that is quite noticeable, isn't it? Which is a little bit of a shame. The decoration though, back to that is really, really amazing. Amazing. Look at the splashes, you've got that lining all over the splashes, you've got a tiny little builder's plate which again now I can get super close to with my new lens equipment there which is great. On the side of the cab you can see we've got the running number in that very complex LNER font which looks wonderful. Look at this, around the frames you've got the red lining which looks fantastic, underneath the smoke box area look at all that red lining over the framework there, absolutely amazing. The buffer beams, look at that white lining around the buffer beams and you've also got the running number duplicated on there as well. Even the wheels have been lined and it's not at all clumsily done. You can see perfect pinstriping all the way around the diameter of the wheels there, which have the proper molded centers so you've got no visible axle showing and that just looks exactly as the B12s do in the photos, which is amazing. The cab is really well lined as well. You can see you've got all the white lining around the cab and if I show you the detail on the inside, you can see it is a pretty good cab. You've got all that glazing in there. The regulator appears to be separately fitted, although none of the gauges have been fully picked out or anything like that. But as a reasonably enclosed cab, I think the detail there is pretty good. Let's talk then about some of the separately fitted parts and here comes one or two of my niggles. The first thing you might notice is the lack of smoke box dart. Now you might just think I've been clumsy over the four years and lost it. Unfortunately, that's not the case. I never had one on this Loco. The first time I unpacked it, I noticed that was missing. This was years ago. I mean, I opened all the box out. I looked in every little corner of it could not find it. So whether it just escaped at the factory and didn't come, whether the retailer unpacked it and lost it, I don't know, but I've never been able to find that. A few other minor niggles then, as you can see, the whistle is made of plastic. The safety valves aren't actually, they are made of metal, but because they wouldn't have matched the whistle, which doesn't have the proper metallic finish, they've all been painted uh, in the same way, uh, which is a little bit of a shame. You don't have the metallic finish there, but I guess maybe the whistle was too complicated to make out of metal. And as you can see, it is a very complex whistle there. Over on the other side, the reversing rod is also just made of plastic. And unlike the whistle, I can't really think of a good reason why that should have to be made of plastic. Again, it doesn't have a very metallic look to it. And it looks a little bit cheap and nasty on an otherwise really, really high spec loco. So it's a shame about that as well. There are some really, really flashy features on this though. As you can see, the buffers look really, really nicely formed. Lovely molded housings on those. Metal, of course, and also sprung. Take a look at that. The top of the cab roof, it's nicely riveted and you've also got the opening hatch, which I can show you there. So you can let a little bit more light in on the cab. That's a really, really nice touch. Underneath the boiler, you can see we've got a representation of the valve gear, which has been picked out in the red as is prototypical. So it stands out beautifully. That's really, really nice. And besides that, the model is fully fitted with all of these metal handrails, which look fantastic. You've got the lamp brackets all over the running plate there, and also one on the smoke box too. Handrails on the cab, above the steps, underneath the smoke box door, absolutely amazing. You've got this little pipe work look just poking out from behind the cab steps there. You've got this, is this the pump here? Not only is this such a finely molded and separately fitted piece, but it's also fully decorated as well. I mean, the level of detail on the Loco itself is just absolutely wonderful. It really is incredibly impressive. The tender is also a fine piece of work as well. As you can see, you've got beautiful decoration on here too with the LNER green. As always, I really, really enjoy the red lining on the underframe there. I think that looks amazing. You've got some really fine coal fitted into the tender, which I believe is removable. So if you wanted to do away with that, you could do. And around the back, you've got more lamp irons, more separately fitted handrails. And you've also got this tiny little plate. I thought this might have been the water capacity, but I think with my new close-ups, I can tell that that is just the running number and some other stuff underneath, maybe a build date. Buffer beam, again, similarly well detailed with the sprung buffers and also the NIM coupling, which has been pre-fitted to the back, but not the front as we saw in the detail bag. So if you want a front coupling on this, uh, which I suppose would make the model look a bit less realistic, you've got to fit it yourself. 
So there we go, that is a good look at this Loco and the high, high level of detail that this has. Yeah, it's not perfect, but as I say, I think it's pretty close, isn't it? So with that, let's take a look at the mechanism, get this down onto the track and see if this Loco still got it where performance is concerned. So there she is then down onto the track, the superb Hornby B12. And if you thought the appearance was the strongest aspect of this Loco, hold your tongue, you haven't seen anything yet. The performance is just amazing. I'm gonna tell you about the mechanism, but bear in mind all of the lovely features that this Loco has mechanically, they are not always a given. There are manufacturers out there, I'm sure you know who they are, that charge 160 quid or more for Locos that have far inferior mechanisms than this. So bear all this in mind. So first of all then, pickups, we have tender pickups, not just two of the axles picking up either. You've got all six tender wheels with proper wire pickups going to each wheel. The Loco driving wheels pick up as well, which means that you've got six pickups per rail, which is absolutely fantastic. Really, really good quality there. If we remove the base keeper plate, you can see that the wheel set has been fitted with a proper set of bearings, which is wonderful to see. Really good performance comes out of it because of that as well. And removing the body, you can see we've got a really nice chunky five pole motor there with dual flywheels. Bear in mind, most of Backman's Locos don't even have one flywheel. And here we have Hornby giving us two. The mechanism is absolutely fantastic. And as well as being great on paper, from what I remember, this Loco is superb, absolutely fantastic in practice as well. So let's set the controller forwards and let me show you just how smooth this is. Look at that. <laughs> now, the first thing I'm going to show you is how well geared this is. I'm gonna rub this up to rub, that's a strange word. Uh, I'm gonna run this up to 50% and you'll see that the speed is not over the top. It is quite speedy and these locos were quite speedy too. But as you can see, it's not overly fast in my opinion. And at the lower speeds, it's got great torque as well. Later on, I'm gonna couple it up to these coaches. I've got six of them there. And I'm gonna try it on Gordon's Hill over that second radius curve, which has been known to floor so many Backman locos. And despite this being a heavy loco, I can guarantee it will not perform as those Backmans did. Anyway, first of all then, let me show you those flywheels in action before we do the crawl. Set it to 50% speed and cut the power. Notice how the wheels don't lock up there. They come to a gradual halt. And that also smoothens out the rotation of the motor as well so that you get beautiful performance. Look at that, it didn't even stop in shot that time. Right, okay, so you might think, oh, he's, he's avoiding the crawl, isn't he? Um, maybe the, the Loco doesn't crawl very well. No, not true, I'm just saving it because it is the best. So best till last, here we go. Here is the crawl, forwards we go. We are. Look at that. Now this is a heavy loco. It's a heavy loco with a massive load on the motor shaft. Two huge flywheels and of course the gear train which is hooked up to this massive heavy engine which weighs nearly 400 grams. And yet it's got the torque to do this. Think of all those models that I've tried on these review shows which just can't do this because the mechanisms are too poor to haul along such a heavy loco. It's a good slow speed and look how consistent it is. It's not even stopping, it's not stalling. Let's go a bit quicker, shall we? What a speed range it's got, look at that. Right, over the points we go. Yeah, no cutting out whatsoever. The performance is absolutely amazing. And this is not even a new model. I've had this for three years. Ran this well when I got it, still runs this well now. Absolutely fantastic. Right, let's go and get the coaches then and I'll show you what I mean about the torque. Okay. Ooh, that was a bit rough, wasn't it? I didn't utilize the beautiful, smooth capability of this loco there, but not to worry. Right, let's see what the torque's like with seven coaches coupled. Yes, seven coaches. I wouldn't dare do that with some locos. Look at that. Right, let's just take up the slack first. Right, there we are. Look at that. I know it's going out of shot. Let me see if I can bring you back in. It's crazy how powerful this is. And it's 160 quid. Well, that's the RRP. Oh, you mean like 145 quid. <laughs> Amazing. So all those people that blather on and say, oh, it's not commercially viable to produce such high-spec locos for a reasonable price, they're wrong. Because I just show them a loco like this and there's no explanation for it. Hornby did a good job on this loco. 
All right, so there we go. That is at 40% right there. So we'll catch up with that in a minute. Elsewhere then, I'm going to be running some other LNER engines we have on the middle line, the D16, which is very similar. I nearly said it's the same thing, just a 4.4. .4. I don't think that's quite true, but as you can tell, there are definitely some big similarities there. And then on the inside line, I have a B1, I believe, and I've hooked it up with some hoppers, uh, a mismatch of hoppers, actually. There's uh, what, one, two, three, four different kinds. <laughs> so yes, it's uh, a bit of a mixed freight, if you like but looking good and handling it very well. Speaking of handling things well, let's go and catch up with the B12, see how it handles Gordon's Hill. Not that we need to. <laughs> you know what it's gonna be like. All right, so this is 40% speed. Notice how perfectly constant that was around that curve. And I'm glad nobody tried to blame my track when I show those Backman Locos and that Hornby Large Prairie struggling on that curve because I would have come back with that and said, well, look at XYZ Loco that have no problems. That was quite fast though, so let's slow it down a bit. Let's choose 30, see how it does it with that. Okay, so we're at 30 now. This is now at lower power than I tried those Backmans at. I wonder if it's gonna slow down to a crawl. Nope. <laughs> I mean, it has slowed down, but it's barely at all. And it's got six coaches, amazing. Sorry, it's got seven coaches, not six. Yeah, oh, there's the D16. The B12 isn't dreadfully powerful. I measured 0.3 newtons on the drawbar. Um, so while it doesn't have a massive amount of actual tractive effort, as you can see, the actual torque of the mechanism is amazing. 0.3 newtons isn't bad though, as you can see. On a gradient like this, it's still handling those seven. Two, three, four. So, yeah, it is seven. <laughs> Just checking. So let's have some ratings then for the phenomenal Hornby B12. A few years old now, still absolutely stunning. So the level of detail I have given five star. I do think I've seen a better cab, if anything, if I'm really nitpicking on other models. But on balance, I think the level of detail has to be a five star, to be honest with you. You've got the sprung buffers, you've got the valve gear between the frames, the decoration, which is phenomenal. You've got the opening intake on top of the cab. The level of detail is absolutely superb. Really, really, really good. Similarly, the performance is amazing. This Backman Helgen is what a good mechanism can do. You know, it's so smooth. It runs at such a good crawl. Double flywheels, so you've got nice gradual acceleration and deceleration. And even on those tight second radius curves on Gordon's Hill, it does not slow down. The performance is the real deal. The pulling power is just 20 coaches. As I say, I measured 0.3 newtons of tractive effort. Yeah, that isn't actually that great. It's actually the same as the Backman Henry, the Backman C1, and the Backman OH Shunter. I mean, all of those are lighter locos. For some reason, this one is not the greatest puller, but as you could see, it does handle those seven coaches without any problems. So, I mean, the power's not a problem. Mechanism then, again, blowing some other manufacturers out of the water with this. Five pole motor, not one, but two flywheels all wheel pickup on the tender and all of the driving wheels pick up on the loco proper metal bearings on the wheel set the list goes on and on it's a fantastic fantastic mechanism no way to fault it five star the quality then also absolutely wonderful you've got that die cast metal body which brings so much weight the decoration is wonderful really really well done i've knocked off one star because i was missing the smoke box start and that did come off before i had anything to do with it so you can't blame me for it also the body doesn't quite fit onto the chassis perfectly it is worse now than it was when it came from the factory so don't blame Hornby entirely for that I could have had something to do with it however it wasn't perfect when I first got it from the factory besides that though nothing wrong with the quality at all it's really well put together really sturdily assembled love it really good value for money then now again for what you get I think £160.99 for the RRP or £145 at the, as a retailer price that happens is very very reasonable I have just given it four star though because it was cheaper just a few years ago I paid just £120 for mine uh, now that they've gone up by like 25 quid it's not quite as good as it was before however like I say for a, a loco that is largely die cast with a mechanism which is so good 
I don't think £145 is bad at all these days, so I have given it four star. Again, if you don't agree with that, please do let me know in the comments. Uh, I won't bite your head off if you do. Anyway, overall then, that is 8.84 out of 10. A very, very good score. Is it going to be in the top five? Ooh, nearly. It's sixth, just above the Andrew Barclay and below the J36. Really, really love this one. As you can tell, superb. So I'm now at 35 speed, which is still a bit on the slow side for this loco, but I want to see how it handles the top of Gordon's Hill. And bear in mind, this is DC on a non-feedback controller, so we're going to have a lot of voltage drop affecting it here. And yet, look at that, look how smooth it was around that curve. That curve was killing the Backman Standard 4. Amazing. It's more than powerful enough for me, that's for sure. Seven coaches, it's fine. Look at that. I genuinely am impressed at how little it's slowing down at that low speed. 50% speed, it's not that impressive because obviously it's just, it's got power to spare. But yeah, at 35, that is really showing what a good mechanism can do. Well, there you have it then, folks. What a, man, what a great loco. I love that one. And I've given it a bit of speed just to finish off, just to prove that it can actually operate amazingly at all speeds. Look at that. So I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. That one is phenomenal. You take care of yourselves, and I will see you very, very soon. All right, cheers, everybody. Have a good week.